I, I figured I would do this video just because I'm trying to accomplish this job and it's uh, way more difficult than I thought it was going to be on this particular boat. This is a 18 foot uh, Maycraft with the rolled hull and the extra wide gunnels, which I assume is the fact that they added pieces of wood in on top here and then glassed it in to give you the top above the rolled edge, which is why I had to get four inch screws for the front of the puck up here. Yeah, let me get down for a second and I'll show you what, what I was running into anyway. Uh, I asked a few other people what they did, but I didn't get uh, good clear answers. And from what I'm gathering is as long as your shaft doesn't hit here, you should be okay. I don't know. Anyway, they said inch and a half. So what I basically did was measure from here to here, and I get three quarters of an inch. So this sticks out exactly three quarters of an inch from this surface. So if I put this, well, I don't know if I was filming all that, but the rub rail was three quarters of an inch out from this surface. If I match this up to this, then in theory, my shaft or this cutout would be right here against the rub rail. So in order to get the inch and a half clearance, you would have to bump this out by an inch and a half off of here. Well, if I do that, the inner puck uh, holes for mounting that end up out here. They're not on the boat anymore. So without making a subplate, um, there's nothing. There's nothing you can do about that. So I did see one guy had his bolted up in here, the first two bolts. So I looked at the various positions of where I wanted the motor to lay. Now I fly fish and I'm right-handed. So I typically fly fish off the port side of the boat on casting. And you know, my right arm is facing the bow. Um, so I really didn't want the motor sitting off that side when it was stowed. So that's why I mounted it in this direction here. Um, I did look at getting a shuttle plate and from everything I gather, the shuttle plate wasn't going to save me anything other than moving the motor back within the boat. But if I did that, I'm gonna be hanging out of the boat in the back. So it really didn't make any sense to do that um, because I, I wouldn't be hanging out here, but I would be hanging out there. And I didn't, I can't really, I don't know, you can't really see it here, but I'll show you. I couldn't really change the angle of this much more without having it really start to take away uh, real estate on the casting platform up front when it's stowed. So I didn't, I didn't want to deal with that. So I did remove my bow light um, just because uh, the other installs I saw I do obstruct the bow light, which is not legal. And I'm Mr. Legal Legal, so not really, but you know what I mean. Um, so what I did was I removed the bow light. I bought two low profile uh, bow lights for port and starboard, which I will mount back here at some point on each side. Um, right now, I'm in the process of moving my bow cleat to where I think I need it. But the one thing that I didn't realize is that when you go with the iPilot link, they give you, well, I didn't I didn't know what this wire was for either. I found out I, I haven't had many Jolo motors, and the one I did have was a motor guide that was wireless. So the foot control didn't have anything to plug into. I guess I, I did find a video that says this is what runs the foot control, if you had a foot control, which I don't. So anyway, this is the iPilot link wire. Okay, that's great. 
it comes to this. I don't know if there's an easy way to transition this into a plug like I will with the power cord. Um, I, I, gotta, I gotta find out, but it would be kind of stupid if there isn't because what, what am I gonna do? Just leave this plugged into this in a compartment somewhere? This is a big wire um, that they give you for routing up to the fish finder. But am I gonna, am I gonna plug this into this? And then if I wanna take the motor off, what, what am I gonna go find this connection, disconnect it? You know, it seems stupid. I would think that there's gonna be a bulkhead fitting for this somewhere. Anyway, um, that's one thing I'm starting to look into now. Uh, I'm a little frustrated that that, that hadn't been um, addressed earlier. But anyway, whatever. Um, let me just drop this motor down. And you'll see what I ended up getting for clearance. Mounting this where I did. All right, hang on. This is kind of become a by myself. Let me set the phone down. Or I can rest it up here, maybe. Probably still won't see anything, but. So there we go. Okay, so deployed. I have that much space, which I'm going to tape measure and measure for you. And believe me, this was uh, not figured out very well. It's all just kind of shotgunned in there because of, uh, I don't know what I got, E O E lock. I don't know what the hell that is. A, -A E A F lock, I don't know. Anyway, um, so I just kind of shotgunned everything in and this is what happened so uh and only because i mean you can see where i put the screws i had to cut one of the washers a little and the great thing about stainless is it will bend when you tighten things up so even though the washers were flat washers they're now uh semi oval washers everything's tightened down um and I'll tell you what, this is one thick piece. You have to go with a four inch screw here. They give you a three inch, but you're gonna go with well, three and a half anyway. So I'm about an inch, oops, let me see where I'm at. I'm about an inch and a quarter. Yeah, I'm about an inch and a quarter off of my, my rail, which I think was actually pretty good considering I mean, I was I was looking at this measurement here. I didn't ac account for this and this uh, in my mathematics, so I didn't have to come out an inch and a half. I could have subtracted whatever that distance is, which is going to be to get my inch and a half. Uh, it looks like another three quarters of an inch. So I could have subtracted three quarters of an inch off the inch and a half. So if I come out three quarters with this plate, that would have been good. The only thing is if I came out three quarters with that plate, I couldn't have got these bolts in anywhere, not without a sub plate. So I did see one guy had them in there, a little different position. He was back this way a little bit, um, mostly because uh, he had a different, took a different angle than I have. But whatever works for you, you know, I, I figured I'm removing the bow light. I'm just gonna put it where I want it and that's it. So let me put this back up. You can see I got an inch and a quarter anyway, which is fine. Should be fine if it doesn't sue me. I don't know. I... Okay, so my video stopped, but uh, I restarted again. Um, so now I'm relocating the bow cleat back. And then I'm, I am actually have it placed there. I just want to make sure that my line is going to go through the bow cleat. And then... Um, which it looks like it will. So here it is here. A ridiculously long bow line, stern line. Yeah, 
that goes through, that goes through. So all I gotta do is drill two new holes for the back, and then I gotta seal those front ones up. So that looks like a good position. And then I can come through the, the line chocks in order to pull my board up on the trailer and whatnot. So right now I just kind of went up over the light, but the light's not there anymore. So I got a kind of a big trolling motor in the way. So I will have to go around it one side or the other. I guess it doesn't really matter. So right now I'm gonna finish mounting this cleat, seal everything up nicely. Then I'm gonna see with this wire See this bolt, the way it's set up, I, I don't know where everything goes. My battery's gonna go below here, and I did order a single battery, a lithium, only because they're lighter weight. And I did that because the rating on this boat is not much, as you can see. So if I add, you know, 60 some odd pounds of battery, times two, another 122 pounds of battery, you know, up in the bow. I think that motor weighs 65 pounds. You know, I, I can save 50% of my weight by going to a lithium. And of course, you get the benefits of the lithium. It lasts longer, gives you the full charge through the whole duty cycle and such. So that is um, my plan. But I have to get from, my, my plan is to come in under here with this connector, plugs right in. I'll plug into that, I hope. Then I gotta run from here down into here. Now, if you look up in here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but we'll, we'll try. Oh, come on. I mean, I get it. It's a, it's a cheap boat. And I get that. But damn, I don't want to have to. So I got three, well, several spots that go up in towards the bow area. Now, I don't know where that's coming from. If that's coming from the light area or what. Now, I can't imagine that those light wires, I don't know where those come out. <laughs> To be honest with you, I can't see under here, so I don't know. Um, so anyway, I'm going to take a snake and poke around, see what I can find. But at some point, I got to get from that compartment all the way back to my center console, which I should be able to do because the light wire is there. Now, if I have to pull that light wire with a... A rope on it I will and then refeed it back through if I have to because that will get me a path to and from so I pull it out once and then pull it back with both both wires hopefully I'm not having any issues that's a that's a risk um, but we'll see all right that's uh that's all I got for now but I will add to this if I have any more issues or if I have any more successes. Um, because I think if you're just the average Joe that's trying to put this in, I mean, I'm not an average Joe. I do a lot of work on my own boats. But um, I haven't installed trolling motors before, so it's my first one with a trolling motor. Um, I mean, how high can it be, right? <laughs> anyway, just because of the design of the boat, it, it, there's a few little challenges here. So I'm going to run the snakes, see what happens, and um, hopefully we can, uh, we can get this figured out. So that's it for now. Okay, here we go. Here's what we got. There's a little tube, fiberglass in here. It's nothing more than a freaking bilge pump tube, whatever. There's a light wire going down in it. I got my snake going. It's supposed to go. And come up. There's a four inch tube that comes up from the back right under here. 
it's supposed to come up right in front of that. Oh, here is the four inch tube. If you put your hand in, you can feel it. It's supposed to come up in front of that. I can't find it anywhere. So I'll send you a picture of where it's supposed to come up. But as you can see, there's a lot of shit coming out of that hole. And the only way I can get in is to go through that six inch and I can only get so far. My wife's got a skinnier arm. She can go a little bit further, but she doesn't feel anything. Why would she? She's not mechanical. Okay. A uh, little update uh, since I last started this video. I got my network cable run. I had to buy a bore scope because where that tube is supposed to end up, it wasn't even close. There's no way I could find it just fishing around. With the bore scope, I was able to see it, and luckily the bore scope had a hook on the end of it, which allowed me to snag a um, piece of Dacron with a big loop on it that I taped loosely to the end of the snake. So I was able to get that. I'm getting ready to put the about a min coda trolling motor plug I'm gonna mount it under here I seen a guy mount it under there it looked pretty nice and I just ran my wires from here now I had to drill a hole into here but let's see if I can show you what I did in there I drilled the hole ran the wires let me see I don't know if you can see that or not but then I just silicone the shit out of it and uh, sealed it back up. So that should seal up and then my anchor lock will still drain where it's supposed to drain. Um, underneath here, since I last was videotaping, I mounted the battery holder for the uh, lithium battery and I got my power cables run down into here that I gotta I gotta finish them off. So I think my circuit breaker I'm probably gonna put up inside that anchor locker just because it'll be easier to reach and work on. So I'm not sure yet though. So that's still undecided. I just got my lights today, which are gonna replace the bow light. I'm gonna mount those right now. <clears throat> I did get my my uh, heading sensor mounted. Um, got my network cable. I had to redo this whole clamshell again because because uh, I had the network wire that got added to it. So um, this was all just starting to to dry up. Anyway, um, so I had to run my network wire up. I did end up having to drill another hole back there for the network wire just because I couldn't fit it through with all the other wires um, through the other through hole. So I drilled that hole, siliconed all the edges of the wood core, uh, put in a nice little trim ring, and ran my wire down to the next level. Now, one thing I did on the... You don't have to do it, but the thing I did, now you're probably wondering, how, how come his is sticking together? What I did here, oh, hold on a second. Sometimes things are just not as easy. I took two pieces of flat silicone like this, right? See, right now, if you're driving down the road, this will vibrate and, and one side will open or the other side will open. So what I do is I take uh, two pieces of uh this is a soft, spongy silicone. It's not a hard, non-porous, but um, it won't absorb water. I just wedge those in there like that, just lightly. And that's enough to keep it from opening when you don't want it to open. <coughs> um, under here, what I ended up doing, you don't. it didn't say you need it, but I really didn't want, I added a little switch here for the um just a little one-off toggle switch for that heading sensor because if i don't have the trolling motor on the boat 
I don't want that on. And sometimes I forget to shut off the power switch. So I don't need anything draining the battery that doesn't need to. And that's just the conglomeration of wires. It's, uh, it's crazy what they did here. Um, but what are you going to do, right? So I got enough room to store a few little things still in here, and that's all I care about. So that's right. Mounted that battery before I showed you guys. It has nothing to do with the control motor install. That's it. Now, all I got to do is finish up front there. I'm going to do my uh, my bow lights right now, I think. We're expecting thunderstorms. So I keep putting the tools away, pull them out, put them away, pull them out. But I think the bow lights will go pretty quick. And then, uh, and then that's it. Uh, that's all I'll do today. Um, I'll show you what I'm thinking of doing with the trolling motor battery. Um, again, I won't know for sure until I fit everything in there if it's what I'm thinking is going to work or not. But I'll show you. Okay, here's the uh, bow light install finished. Um, this is from up inside the boat. Let me go back out and I'll show you what it looks like. <coughs> I just turned them off, but that's what they look like outside the boat. Nice and stealthy. They're only a half inch high. And when this is off here, I'm going to be fly fishing, so... I don't want anything sticking up too high. That's why I didn't go with a, a single high one in behind it. Um, just because I didn't want to have to deal with that. Here's the, the starboard side. So I had to make sure that looking at it from front on, you know, there were no obstructions. So I am outside of the, of the line chalk. Um, this is obviously will get pushed in further, but so I'm outside the line chalk. On both sides, <clears throat> uh, kind of hard to tell, but it didn't look like I went really. You know, it's really hard to tell. It doesn't look like they're the same spot, that, but the same distance from the center line where the where the uh, bow cleat was. So I, I don't know what the hell is going on here, but something isn't on center. Anyway. They work, they work, they're both outside of, these These are probably in different spots, I don't know. Yeah, that other one looks like it's further back. So, no big deal. Um, it works. I don't remember what my last update was, but um, this morning I threw the battery in down here. I checked the cover over the clamp checked everything out that way and um, I was able to have enough space to do what I want to do which was make a panel for a battery charger this goes with the Victron Energy uh, monitor and then of course I got my circuit breaker here for the trolling motor and this is the LBP mount which is why I spent the money and bought the amount because I kind of had this in mind to begin with. So I'm basically all pre-wired up here. I just need to um, I just need to to put this together. So I got to double check. I don't know if that uh, I got to double check that on the um, battery charger. I don't know if it goes directly to the battery or if it should be going into the Victron. I gotta go check the wiring diagram on that. But I've about ready to put this in and once I get that placed in, I'll show you how I finish it off. All right, I just finished the install in here. I got my 3 8 connectors for the ground. So here I am, completely installed, down inside here. Nice little plate. Get this coming over here. I actually bought 
another one of these which I'm gonna put up by the trolling motor, but I'm gonna modify it for the uh, network cable instead, it's just so I got a place that I can throw the throw the end and seal it off. So once I get my trolling motor plug and install that, then I can hook this wire up to the load side of the circuit breaker. But right now, my battery monitor, I gotta set this up. I haven't set this up yet, but uh, I got the app. I'm gonna set it up through the app. It's easier than laying down here trying to, trying to figure it out. And that's it. I should be good to go. My positive cables up here. Nice light battery. I still got room for my life jackets and my paddle and my throw cushion. So I'm kind of excited. I'm just going to keep, I think, the, uh, the stuff away from this when it's charging. That's all. But we'll see. That's it. I'm going to add this to the rest of the videos. And I'm almost done. This is next Wednesday I get the uh, I get the plug for the trolling motor. I'll install that. Another one of these, and then hitch up a couple buck connections, and I'm done. Nice clean install. All right, the final piece of the puzzle came today. This connector. Um, what I did do was I bought another one of those electric plug connectors. And I just opened it up so that my network cable and the connector can pass through. So now I can just set the network cable in here, close this up when I'm disconnected. And I don't have to worry about my network cable getting messed up. So that's the way I did that, like that. Um, this is a nice, a nice setup here. You pull this off, everything seals up nicely. This cap will go in play. I kind of like this cap dangling around, but I don't know. Maybe I can wedge it up in there or something while I'm fishing. Anyway, I made all my connections under here. Kind of a mess, but there's not much I can do about it. Um, and that's it. I'm going to put my anchor in here. I'll probably put some cushioning over here to keep my anchor from, from rubbing against those power cords at all. I just gotta hitch up my power underneath right now and I'm gonna test her out, make sure everything works. I think I'll be good to go. That finishes the install. I hope uh, hope it helps everybody out. I did put this on today. This is rock solid, but I don't really like this setup because this stays with the motor. You, un you undo the clamp and then the ball stays with the motor, which I don't really like. They have another end here that's called, I forget what it's called, a mini clamp or something like that. Uh, I get that on order. It should be here Friday. I'm going to try that for grabbing this instead of this. That way I don't have anything stuck to the motor when I, when I release from here, which is what I want. So we'll see. Um, but that pretty much finishes the install. Uh, should be good to go.